Good afternoon, everybody. What is going on? I am Jeff Grant Media. In today's video, we have two jackets inside this big bag here from Brave Star Selvage. Now, Brave Star did send me both of the jackets that are in this bag for free, but I will be sending one of these jackets back. Now, the reason they sent me two jackets are they actually are backing me for this year's Red Lion Rally, which starts this June. I paid for it with my own money, my golden handshake back in, I believe was it December I bought that now. Um, so I had sent them the video after I had put it out and they liked the video. I said, hey, if you know, ever wanna to work together in the future, you know, let me know. Uh, I'm more than happy to put out some more content on any of your other products. And then we kind of got to talking about the Redline Rally. I was interested in entering it and I was tossing around what jacket I would like to wear for the rally. So we kind of came to an agreement that they would send me uh, a jacket to uh, to wear for the one, one year, the 365 days for the Redline Rally. Now, uh, originally they were just gonna send me one jacket, they're gonna send me the gauntlet. But uh, because it starts in June, gonna be a little warm so the gauntlet is uh actually this one he said comes in closer to 22 and a half to 23 ounces that's kind of thick that's kind of heavy so they also sent me an uppercut which is 16 and a half ounces so i have both of those jackets inside this bag here so what we're gonna do today is crack this bag on open take a look at both of the jackets try them on and then i will decide on which one i will be keeping and wearing for the rally and the other one i will be sending back to brave star so uh kind of excited because i, I really want to see the difference between the 23 and a half ounce jacket and the 16 and a half ounce jacket and then maybe even uh go grab my golden handshake and compare the 14 ounce to both of them so let's uh let's just start by cracking this thing on open <sighs> Ooh, this is a good poly mail. Oh, there it goes. All right, so. Uh, all right, so they did include a poly mailer set it back and a return shipping address. And again, that is because I'll only be keeping one of these two jackets, the other I will be sending back to them. So I need to be careful with both of these jackets for two reasons. Uh, one, I will be sending one of them back, and two, I cannot wear this jacket until June first so i can try it on for size see how it fits see how i like it but then i must hang it and not wear it until june first so that's going to be the hardest part about this whole thing is knowing i have one of these two awesome jackets upstairs just hanging on a coat rack and i cannot wear it for like four more months <sighs> okay let's let's take a look at the jackets we'll we'll cross that bridge when we get to it I was wondering why I couldn't pick the top jacket up. They took the banding and just wrapped it around both of the jackets at once. So let's go ahead and remove this banding here. I'll set that aside. And there. Okay. I'm going to take a guess just by feeling them and say... This one is the uh, gauntlet and this one is the uppercut. Because this, this definitely feels, feels lighter. And you can see this is also... The Sony has much better color than this really old Canon, but this one is definitely a deeper indigo than this one. So, yeah, just and holding the picking up, holding them. The this one's definitely this one's definitely going to be the gauntlet. This is going to be the uppercut. So let's see if I was correct. Yes, 22 ounce gauntlet, 16 and a half ounce uppercut. All right. So if we Pop these things open. Yeah, we can clearly see a difference in color here. You can see the the uppercut's a little bit lighter. These are both um, Japanese selvage denim. We're gonna get into all of the specs of each of the jackets, but um, right off the bat, both these are Japanese selvage denim. Uh, these are not from the Cone Mills, which is my golden handshake, was um, NOS dead stock from the Cone Mills um, factories located in North Carolina. Both of these are made from a Japanese denim. So these are both new stock, Japanese made. But before I even try these on or put these on my body, just kind of feeling them, the gauntlet does feel a lot smoother, a lot softer to the touch. And you could see the weave on it a lot better. 
Now both of these are a size large, but Mick the founder did say that the gauntlet um, might be a little bit longer in the body and the sleeves because the heavier weight denims will shrink up a little bit more than some of the lighter weight denims. And I do know from corresponding with him earlier with my golden handshake, he said the golden handshake in really hot water, even though it is sanfordized denim, can shrink up to a half a size. So the gauntlet may shrink up a little bit more than a half a size, where the iron side being 16 and a half ounce should probably only shrink up about a half a size. But I laid them out. I have the uh, gauntlet on the bottom and I have the uppercut on the top. And these are about about the same. If anything, I think the uppercut might be a little bit longer than the gauntlet. The sleeves look like they are about the exact same length. So if anything, I think the uppercut might be about an eighth of an inch longer, eighth to a quarter of an inch longer than the gauntlet. But now let's throw each of these on. We'll see how they feel. And while we're at it, we're gonna go ahead and throw a few specs at you. The Brave Star Ironside Uppercut Jacket comes in at $158 USD. It is made from a 16 and a half ounce Japanese selvage denim. Now I'm starting with the uppercut and trying it on. I can already tell that the 16 and a half ounce denim is much stiffer than the 14 ounce of the golden handshake that I already have and already broke in. But it does feel pretty good. And again, I'm trying to not move around or bend my arms too much because I do have to send one of these jackets back and I don't want to crease it up too bad. And it still needs to look brand new for the raw proof when I submit my pictures with the hashtag from the Redline Rally. But overall, the fit feels pretty good. We'll go ahead and button it up. I do feel like I still have plenty of room inside for me to layer, you know, once the fall hits and I have to actually wear a hoodie or a vest underneath this to keep a little bit warmer. But I like the fit. This 16 and a half ounce Japanese denim does feel really nice to the touch. And overall, I am liking the cut, feel, and finish of this jacket, but we still have to try on the gauntlet. So let's go ahead and do that now. The Brave Star Ironside Gauntlet Jacket comes in at $178 USD. On the site, it is listed as a 22 ounce denim, but according to Mick, it is more like a 22 and a half to a 23 ounce denim. This is also made from a Japanese selvage denim. And as I have already mentioned, the gauntlet may run a little bit longer in the body and the sleeves because the heavier weight denim will shrink up a little bit more. Now trying the gauntlet on, two things I noticed right off the bat that I didn't expect. Unbuttoning the heavier weight 22 and a half to 23 ounce denim was not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was gonna be a pain to get these buttons undone. And putting the jacket on, it doesn't feel as stiff as the uppercut felt. Even though it is a heavier weight, and I can feel that it is a heavier weight, it does not feel as stiff on the body as the uppercut felt. Another thing that I'm noticing is even though I lined up the sleeves on the table while wearing it, the gauntlet does feel like the sleeves are a little bit longer than they were on the uppercut. So that is going to hold true. I'm not noticing offhand if it does feel longer on the body, but the sleeves definitely jumped right out at me. And again, this is a deeper indigo than the uppercut is, but feeling it, wearing it, it feels pretty good. Going ahead and buttoning it up, it is easier than I expected to button this heavier weight. So all in all, this is actually a lot softer garment than I expected it to be. I thought this was going to be a lot stiffer garment and a lot more work to get it broken in because it was 22 ounce. But honestly, I feel like this is softer and going to break in quicker than the uppercut that comes in at the 16 and a half ounce. And wearing it buttoned up, it still feels good, even stiff and unbroken in. I feel like if I need it to right now, I can throw a hoodie on underneath this or a light vest for an extra layer of warmth and be completely fine. But all in all, I'm really digging the gauntlet. And this was my first choice. I wanted to go with the gauntlet. I wanted to enter the 22 ounce in the competition. But uh, Mick said that, you know, maybe I should think about doing something a little bit lighter seeing as the competition is starting in June. But I don't know. This is going to be a very hard decision to make. But I think it might be time for me to introduce my two special guests of the evening. Oh, special guest, why don't you make your grand entrance now? Come on. Come on. It's me! Hello, with Pinky! It's Hazel Fantastic and Pinky! She's a new pet. So, Hazel, these two jackets here on this table, which one do you like the best? Um, let me do. This one feels hard and this one feels soft. 
<laughs> so Hazel likes the gauntlet a little bit more than she likes the uppercut. She likes the feel of the gauntlet, because even though this is a heavier weight, the gauntlet does have a smoother feel to it than the uppercut. Now, I'm pretty sure once both of these get a rinse and you get a lot of that starch out, they're both gonna soften up quite a bit. And once you wear them and break them in, they're both gonna soften up. But uh, for me, this is a very hard decision. I don't know which one I'm gonna go with. Hazel the likes- The gauntlet. Which one? The gauntlet, but I just had the a bath. The gauntlet? Yeah, I just had a bath. <laughs> Hazel just had her bath. <laughs> boy, oh boy, is this going to be a hard decision. Both of these jackets, feel really nice to wear. They both feel good to the touch. Surprisingly so, the gauntlet does feel softer and smoother to the touch than the uppercut did. But really, I thought that was going to be the inverse. I thought the uppercut was going to feel a little softer and feel a little less stiff because it is a lighter weight denim than the gauntlet. But in actuality, the gauntlet does feel a lot smoother to the touch and it definitely was softer to wear first time right out the gate. But both these jackets have really nice qualities and both are appealing to me for different reasons for the Redline Rally. Being that it starts in June, wearing the uppercut at a 16 and a half ounce denim seems like the smarter route to go because it's gonna be warm. We're gonna be starting this in the summer and wearing it all summer before I get to those cooler, cooler fall and then winter and then spring months. But uh, the gauntlet, it does feel a lot softer than I thought. It feels a lot nicer on the body right out of the gate. And that is originally the jacket that I had planned on wearing for the rally. So in my mind, the gauntlet was where I wanted to be. But now seeing and feeling and touching and wearing both of these jackets, I'm torn. I don't know which one I'm gonna wanna go with. So I'm going to have to A, B these a couple more times, wear them back to back, see where each of them are laying on the body, how they're feeling. I might change my shirt, put on a flannel, a little something a little bit heavier. This is like a, a very thin shirt, so I might throw on a flannel and see how that feels, and then also just put them on over my t-shirt. Just kind of test them on different layers, uh, but I can't really do much besides just try them on a couple of times because one has to go back to Brave Star, it will be sold, and the other has to look new for my raw proof when I get the hashtag for the uh, Redline Rally. I've actually already entered the rally using the gauntlet. Um, that was prior to me talking to Mick about um, him thinking that maybe testing out the iron side might be, or I'm sorry, the uppercut might be a good idea because it's a lighter weight and the fact that it's starting in June. So I could easily just email them and change my entry. That's not an issue at all, but I've already entered the gauntlet. In my mind, I was wearing the gauntlet but wearing a lighter weight jacket in the dead of summer definitely sounds like a good idea to me. Now, Miss Hazel Fantastic did say that she likes the gauntlet over the uppercut. She likes the way the gauntlet feels. She agrees with me. The gauntlet right out the box does feel a little softer, a little bit smoother to the touch. So ultimately she liked the gauntlet better. So yeah. she she thinks, right baby? Yeah. She thinks. I have a chocolate pop. She's got it. You're up. Here, come here. Don't get the chocolate pop near the jackets. <laughs> Come back here. So she thinks we should wear the gauntlet for the challenge, but I am personally torn. And I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna let you wonder which one of these two jackets I'm going to wear for the Redline Rally this year. Drop a comment down below, follow along. I will reveal it once uh, it's we're closer to the rally. Um, but for now, I'm gonna let you take some guesses because honestly, at this point in time, right now, at the time of filming, I am unsure which one of these two jackets I'm gonna wear for the rally. I'm going to test both of them back to back with a couple of different shirts on, see how they feel with a heavier shirt, with a t-shirt on, and I might even go grab like my, my Relwin Winzip vest, which is something that I often use as a mid-layer underneath not only denim jackets, just about any jacket I wear. That's a great uh, mid-layer. I wear that quite a bit. So I'm gonna see how it feels underneath each of these jackets. And then one's gonna go back, and one's gonna get hung up, because I unfortunately cannot wear it until June 1st. I can't even do a cold soak and get some of those starches out until June 1st, because you cannot wear, you cannot wash, and you cannot soak these jackets until the competition officially kicks off. And that is June 1st, 2024. So stay tuned to see which one of these two jackets I choose to wear, which one I send back, and uh, I will also be doing update videos along the way 
for the rally. I'm also probably gonna be posting quite a bit to my IG about the updates of the rally because this is just something that's really intriguing to me. I really like the idea of wearing the hell out of a single garment for an entire year and seeing what kind of wear I get out of it, what it looks like at the end. Now, I guarantee you there are people that are going to wear these war harder and work harder in these than I am, but I'm gonna do my best to do as much as I can to not beat this thing up, but to wear this thing in and break it in. And I, my goal is to come in top 20. I wanna come in top 20. I would like to win, but I know there are people that are carpenters, mechanics, that are definitely gonna be crawling around a lot more frequently than I am. But my goal is to come in top 20 um, of the fades, and uh, we're gonna see how close I can get to that but drop a comment down below which one of these two you think I'm gonna wear. Maybe why you think I chose that one. And uh, when we get closer to Redline Rally kickoff, Hi, I'll let you know which one I chose. So with that, if you like this video or any of my other videos, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Smash that big red button and ring that bell right next to it so you get notifications next time I post a brand new video. Good night.